Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This weekend I'm in Melbourne with my wife Lucy and we are actually going to watch the Harry Potter play which we're super excited to go see but that is not the point of this video. The whole point of this video is that we've actually got a free night tonight and I thought it'd be a great idea to show you guys how I shoot and edit some panning photos. One of the most iconic things about Melbourne is that they have a really good tram system. So I thought tonight it'd be a great idea to take some panning shots of these iconic Melbourne trams. So yeah, let's just get right to it and let's start shooting. So I'm gonna give you guys three tips to get a good panning shot. So tip number one is to set your camera settings. So you wanna lock your aperture to the biggest you can get. On this lens that I'm using, it's f4. For your ISO, you wanna balance that with your shutter speed so that it's not too bright or too dark. With your shutter speed, you wanna go a bit slower, but not too slow. I went with about a quarter to a fifth of a second. Tip number two is to shoot in burst mode. So you can go quick burst, and you can just keep following each tram as they pass. And finally, tip number three, you wanna find a nice lit up background so that you get a really lit up and colorful background when you're panning. And one last tip is to be patient. I took a lot of photos tonight. I'll put the exact number below. And yeah, good luck. Let's go back to the hotel and edit them. All right, guys, we just got back to the hotel room. I think I got some really cool shots. So let me show you guys how I would edit these photos. So we're gonna jump into Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop, which are the two programs I usually use to edit my photos. I've already imported all the images I like, and this one has to be my favorite one from the night. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how I edit this photo. So first, we're gonna be using Lightroom to do the base color grade. I'm gonna be speeding through this part of the edit because I wanna show you guys in more detail the Photoshop part, but I'm gonna be making a future YouTube video where I explain to you in detail what I look at when editing in Lightroom. What I'm looking for in this particular color grade is to increase the saturation and give it a little bit more pop of color and to also make the tram stand out a little bit more. You can also pause this video anytime to see where I've moved each slider and what I've done to achieve this final color grade. When color grading using Lightroom, it's completely subjective. There's no right or wrong way to do it. It's purely based on how you feel and how you like your colors to look like in your own images. So now I've completed this base color grade in Lightroom. Let's jump into Photoshop and I'll show you guys how we can take this panning photo to the next level. The first thing we're going to do in Photoshop is to crop the image. For Instagram, I usually crop my images 4x5 ratio. When cropping, you want to make sure that delete crop pixels is ticked off so that you have the flexibility to recrop and recompose your images afterwards. Then what we're going to do is to straighten up the vertical lines in the photos. To do this, you want to first drag some guidelines from the rulers on the side. If you can't see your rulers, you can turn them on by hitting Ctrl or Command R. Once you've got some guidelines, you want to hit Ctrl or Command T, which is the free transform tool. And then we're going to choose the distort option. Move all four corners until you get your vertical straightened. And after this, you can recompose your image by recropping and also by using the rule of thirds guidelines. To do this, you wanna to go to view, new guide layout, and type in three in both the columns and rows number fields. So now we've got your image cropped and composed to the way you like it. The next step is to use the motion blur tool to make the tram look like it's going even faster. To do this, you wanna first duplicate the base layer by right clicking the layer and hitting duplicate layer. Then you wanna to go to filter, blur and motion blur. Play around with the angle until you match the angle of the top of the tram. In this case, I've gone for minus four degrees. And to make the tram look like it's going super fast, I've gone for a thousand pixels. The next step is to add a layer mask for this layer. For those of you who don't know what a layer mask is, it's a great way to show and hide parts of a layer in a non-destructive way. If you paint white on the layer mask, it's going to show the layer. If you paint black, then it's going to hide the layer. So now you're going to click that layer mask, hit the paintbrush tool and paint black to reveal the original tram in the layer below. You can use the keyboard shortcut X to toggle between the background and foreground layers, in this case, the black and white. If you right click the image, you can play around with the brush size and hardness of the paintbrush in order to mask around the tram with more precision. Because there's already movement around the tram, you don't have to mask it super perfectly. You can kind of be a little bit rough about it. Just keep playing with the layer mask until you're happy with the edges of the tram. If this was just a straight panning photo, you only need to do this motion blur step once but because this image has been shot on a bit of an angle, we're gonna have to do this motion blur step two more times. One with the same angle as the bottom of the tram and one that goes perfectly horizontal in between the top and the bottom of the tram. We're also gonna be using layer masks for these two layers as well. 
You can duplicate a layer mask by holding Ctrl and Alt on the keyboard while dragging that layer mask to the layer that you want. I'm going to speed through this next bit because I've already shown you how to do this once and it's basically the same thing repeated two more times. Just keep experimenting on your layer mask until you're happy with the look of the motion blur around the tram. Finally, we're going to select these three motion blur layers and group them into a folder by clicking the folder at the bottom. And we're going to play around with the opacity of this folder to reveal the original background a little bit and give this image a little bit more depth. I went with 80% opacity. So now we're done with the Photoshop part of the edit. All you have to do now is hit save and your edit will automatically jump back into Lightroom so you can do a final color grade. So now we're back in Lightroom and again we're just going to apply another color grade on this photo. Usually the second color grade isn't as drastic as the first, it's just a way to give your image that finishing touch. In this case I've added a little bit of a vignette to drag the focus back to the center and also played around with the colors to make the purples pop out a little bit more. And now we're done. So let's have a look at the before and the after. And again let's look at the before and here's the after. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial, let me know in the comments below if you found that useful. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace!